Hello everyone, we are in the RBMK Thousand Simulator. This is the Chernobyl RBMK Reactor Unit 3, malfunctions off. And in this video, we'll try to, to work with the turbine main valve to see what's the optimal opening, to see what's the optimal pressure in the main steam line to obtain the maximum electrical output. I will do a startup from, from the cold state but this is not a startup tutorial video. I will not go into details um, about everything I do to start up this reactor. If you want to see a tutorial of the startup, you can go to the previous video I published. It's the one which is 48 minutes long. And in there I do a good explanation about everything I do. So let's start here. If all the levels in the reactor and everywhere are fine, we can already starting the circulating, circulating water pumps. Water treatment pumps, pump one and pump two. Open the valves. The condensate system, we turn one of the three pumps and set the deaerator level into auto. The deaerator level set point is good at zero. And we turn on the two polishers. Okay. Next, the feed water pumps and system. We open, we will only turn on the pump number one. So we need to open the inlet valve one. Once it's open, We'll turn on the pump one, and when, once it's on, we, uh, we open the discharge valve. Okay, and the jump level control is fine, it's in one element control, uh, it's in the startup valve, and everything else is fine. We can go now to the deaerator system. I will set it into auto, and we will need to open the deaerator vent valve to 50%. But I will do this later. I will just open to 10% now and leave it in front of the turbine just to not to forget. Condenser vacuum systems. We switch on the condenser air ejector. It will not light on until we have enough pressure in the condenser vacuum. And we can already shut down the off core cooling systems. Okay, it's going green, green, so it's good. Reactor drain control, we can set it into auto and 4 inches of set point and we mark this square here. Emergency cool core cooling system, we set it into auto. This is the diesel pump that will turn on if everything else fails. The condenser hot level the condenser hot well level control is fine, is at zero and auto. And now we can already start pulling rods just because the source range is so slow that we will save some time doing so. We need to select the center, center core only, go into fast and start pulling rods. Okay, it's a good practice to have the auto scan control on always that you start pulling rods. So switch it on and it will auto scan if there is some dangerous situation so the whole thing doesn't blow up. What else? Okay, we can already go to the turbine. And to reset the turbine, we need to start the lubricating oil. This lubricates the bearings of the turbine. Start the hydraulic system. This is the, the one that governs the valve of the turbine. And open the steam drain. Yes. We can already reset here. And we can switch on the turning gear. Turning gear makes the turbine rot rotate at a very low speed, like 20, 20 RPMs, but not using steam from the main steam line. It's like a gear connected to an electric engine. And once it's at 20 RPMs, we'll start the steam seal. So almost 20. Now we can start the steam seal and we close this dialog. Okay, now we need to keep an eye into the absorber rod control. We have the neutron rate at 5%, so we decrease the withdrawal speed to medium. We don't want to surpass 8%. We display the alarms here. Acknowledge. Okay, and we go to slow. Because we were at 7% neutron rate. We're at 6 now, so I will hold in a second when it reaches 7. Okay, we'll hold it now. 
So we see the neutron flux white line here going down, but it's still in a positive rate. So now we see we, we don't see it, but the neutron flux is increasing now. Okay, now it's a good moment to start one of the pumps of each loop. This is the reactor recirculation pump. We open the inlet valve. This is the same as the feed water pumps and systems. Then we turn on the pump one of each loop. Not yet, when this is 100%. Now, on and on. And then we open the outlet valve. This will do two things. One is it will, it will reduce void. Now void is at 0%, so in this sense it will change nothing. And the other thing is it will remove heat from fuel elements. Without doing this, we cannot keep increasing reactor power. And now I can continue pulling a bit rod, keeping an eye into the ne neutron rate. I will hold at seven percent. Okay, hold. And now I, I will connect the automatic reactor control, which connects the rods automatically to keep a given power set point. The power set point is at two percent now. We see a neutron flux just went to one percent at this moment. And at the moment I pull rods, it will engage the automatic control. So I will click now, pull rods. And because it goes very high, I will hold it. And probably it's already in auto. No, it's at 4%, so this is not at all auto. I will increase at point to match this 5% now. And let's see if it engages auto. Okay, we have neutron flux of 12%. This is not normal. I will insert a bit rods. Uh, of course, it was, it's not engaging because we were in the center core only. We need to be in the full core to engage automatic control. So now it engages, tries to reduce this neutron flux to 9%, 10% now. Okay, I will acknowledge this all these messages while it hits a bit everything will we have time to have a look into this deaerator system steam supply so i will increase the aerator vent valve to 50 percent now and because meanwhile uh, i see the train charts look all stable I'm thinking about increasing reactor power, but while we have the reactor level, it's increasing. That I don't like that too much. Let's see if it stabilizes. Okay, we are uh, at a 50% of the deaerator vent valve. That's perfect. And I will check the schematic. Okay. Ah, oh, no, I thought I forgot this, but it just it didn't light up at the moment I opened. So we have one pump in one of its recirculating loops, two water treatment pumps, two here condenser circuit, one here condensate system, and one feed water pump here. It seems everything is okay. The reactor is stabilizing the level now, so I will increase power to 15%. We are at the minute nine of simulation, and we are starting to to already pull rods to increase power. Now it's a good moment to look at the main steam dam control and increase the set point. We will need at least 7,500 to connect the turbine. So minimum you should set this at 8,000 now. But uh, I will set it a bit higher. Because after spinning up the turbine, we need to connect to the generator. To connect the turbine, the turbine to the generator, we need a higher pressure. So why not just increasing, just to save time in this startup procedure? Okay, eleven thousand of set point in the main steam line. I will leave like that for the moment and set this into auto. I will increase a bit further the reactor set point to twenty percent. This is not normal practice, and I'm almost sure this is not a safe practice. 
The normal thing to do is to keep the power set point of the reactor at 10% until until turbine synchronization to the grid. I do this to speed up the heating of the drum and the build up of pressure in the drum. Once we are at the point of reaching 7000 of pressure, I will decrease back to 10% to speed up the turbine and then we'll see how we continue. Okay, most of the alarms disappear now. The only remaining alarms are the low pressure in the drum, low main steam temperature, condenser vacuum low, and reactor feed water low. So we are dealing with that now with this drum heating. I don't know if I turn on the condenser air ejector. Okay, it's on now. I forgot to do it before, and now the condenser vacuum is increasing. So now we could already open the main steam dam control valve without creating the disk rupture problem or trouble. And the condenser vacuum breaker is closed, as it should be. We close this. We have a high deaerator pressure, we see here 293. But I think this will be fine. Because the DA vent valve is open, so it will alleviate this pressure. And the reset point is at 98. So this is just a transitory situation. Pressure at 2000. Let's increase a bit more the power set point. 225. Pressure at 3000. Pressure 4000 Now it's increasing very fast 5000 6000 And now we will decrease the power set point to around 10% And start spinning up the turbine Thirteen is fine, and I will start opening the valve. I'm supposed to do this a bit later, probably. Because it's not spinning up yet. I think it needs to reach 7500. So the valve is already open, but the turbine is not spinning. For when these alarms disappear, the steam... Okay, the alarm just disappeared. And the turbine is spinning up. Very good. The vibration goes up. This is very normal at the beginning of the spin up. And now we'll increase valve opening at 5%. Shell temperature, rotor temperature, quite equal. Steam flow of 11, we can open to 10%. Already 1500 RPMs. We are at 14 minutes of simulation, and we are at half of the nominal speed of the turbine. Let's increase the valve opening to 15%. This is to compensate for the loses. As the faster the turbine rotates, the, fa the more energy needs to keep this rotation. But at the end, we will need around around 5% probably to keep the 3600. So I will need to start decreasing this number before we reach 3600. And the drum pressure at 9,000. Okay, we'll start decreasing. 
the valve opening because we are already 3100 3200 3300 we will close further thirty four hundred thirty five hundred and now I should reduce close to five percent to avoid overshooting the speed limit okay open a bit more otherwise it will be slow And the pressure in the drum is very high now, it's at 11,000. That's perfect for the connection of the turbine. Okay, we'll switch to automatic control once we reach 3600. And when this thing stabilizes, now automatic control. When it's stable, the velocity will connect the oscilloscope and synchronize. I can already synchronize because the pressure in the drum is high enough. Or probably it needs it needs just a bit more probably. But it will reach. Yeah, I think I will set the set point at twelve thousand. And. This will be enough, I think. And now I will synchronize. I switch on the oscilloscope and I will close the brake just before the top depth center. Now. It didn't close. Why it didn't close? I will try again. Okay, now I close the brake, it's synchronized. We are generating one megawatt and I will increase power to 15% in the reactor and I will, will I will check my notes to make sure what's the next step okay to go further we need to connect the three free uh, feed water pumps so I open the inlet valves on on and open the discharge valves. I connect the three element control, the main valve, main valve, and everything else is okay. Close it. The turbine control should be put into main valve and the turbine support needs to close drains. That's perfect, and now we can in keep increasing power. After 20%, we need the second condenser pump. So, sorry, condensate pump. So I will go to 25, turn on the second condensate pump. It's on, and we got some alarms. That's fine, just information. And usually after 25% of power you will switch on the thermal power correction, but I don't want to do because without the thermal power correction I will be able to get closer to the 100% neutron flux. So let's just continue like that. Now the turbine is set into auto. This means that it keeps the pressure it had at the moment we synchronize it to the grid, which is 11.993. And it keeps the valve control opening at the value that keeps this pressure. So now I will increase the power set point to 
but I need to be careful because the differential expansion is increasing a lot now. There are like th 40 degrees difference between the shell and the rotor. And I think we will get the alarm for the differential expansion very soon. We have the main steam dump control with the valve open, so I will increase the point a bit. I will just set it to the maximum, to 13.5 thousand. Yeah, we got the alarm. High differential expansion and high turbine vibration. So I will just wait one moment. I went to above almost 60% in very short time. So this is normal. And now we see the drum pressure increasing with the main valve closed. So what, what, we, what we will do when we reach nominal power, or close to nominal, is to, to change this pressure set point. We could do this in two manners. One is to introduce manually here, change this number, and then the, the auto control of the valve will change this opening to, to, to reach this value. Or we, got, we can go into manual and control the valve automatically to set the opening and then the pressure will vary accordingly to the opening. And uh, I want to see what the maximum generated load that we can reach by optimizing this value. In the manual, because everything is written in an imperial system, the, the, the pressure set point that they recommend you for the turbine when it's synchronized is of 1500 PSIG. I don't know what's the value here displayed, but if we assume it's millibar metric system, so the first two digits are bar and these three are the decimals of bar, so millibar, this means that 1500 PSIG are 10,342 millibar. So we will try to go close to that value to see if, like so, we maximize the generated load. Okay, and while talking, the the power set, the vibration went lower, so we can increase again the power set point. Let's go to 75. Let's see how the differential expansion evolves and, and see how we continue. I will go to 80. We have a shell temperature of 270 and a rotor of 296, so almost 30 degrees. Below 30 degrees usually it's fine, the differential expansion below 30 degrees is not too, too high. So we'll go to 90 now, and we are at 23 minutes of simulation, a bit longer than what I expected. In a previous test I, I reached nominal power in 20 minutes, so here, probably because I was talking I lost some time in some of the steps. And we see how the valve is opening, now it's at 66%. Okay, the differential expansion is not too high, we can go to 95% of nominal power. And now we'll start to be careful not to overshoot the power set point or we'll have a scram. I will go to 97 now. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, and ninety-nine point five. 
let's have a look into the neutron flux here it's 99.3 so we can still increase half point more without reaching 100 percent in the neutron flux so this will be the last step power set point 100 percent neutron flux 99.8 percent and it seems that i forgot to do something which is turning on the second the second pump in the recirculation loops let me check my notes this should have been done yeah th this should have been done after 20 percent of power because this is a positive void reactor it means more void me uh, increases reactivity turning on one of the pumps will decrease reactivity so we will go below this neutron flux so this is safe to do because we will not overshot the neutron flux i will do it now open the inlet valve this loop two inlet valve otherwise the reactor is perfectly stable and we can run it in with only one recirculation pump the only thing is that we will need to withdraw more rods if we only use one of the three pumps I will switch on one pump and the second one and now open the outlet valve and now let's see how the neutron flux evolves I did not notice any change in neutron flux. It seems that the power set point automatic control just kept this constant. But we do see a spike in the reactor level, generated load and drum steam flow. Because suddenly we were bringing more hot water to the drum, I guess. Okay, I can close this. And. now i will start playing with the with the valve control so now we have the valve open at 73 percent and the generated load of 850 megawatts this will keep increasing because the thermal power will keep increasing as we create fission products and the delayed thermal production fission products builds up we are 27 minutes of simulation let's see how the mm, changes in the pressure set point affect the generation of electricity so now we are at 11.9 thousand here i will try to reduce this to the value that theoretically is 1500 psig which is 10,000 10,342 Okay, and we're in auto, so it didn't work. I need to switch. No, that's totally fine. We're in auto. So auto means that the valve is automatically controlled according to this pressure set point, and we see now some some increase on reactor level, generated load, and drum steam flow. Because now it had some available excess pressure, it's wasting is not wasting but it's using this pressure to generate more load so the load increased from 850 to 897 but this is temporary once we reach the set point of 10.3 thousand in the drum this should stabilize back to some value around 850 megawatt let's see You see this generated load is not stable because we are reducing drum pressure. So we are using an energy that was stored in a form of potential energy in the steam pressure. We can only consider a generated load to be stable if there are no pressure changes in the drum at the same time. Okay, so very soon we'll reach 10.3 thousand 
And at that moment, we should have a genetic load which is representative of what we can produce in a sustained manner. The valve is open at 81%, a bit higher than it was before. It didn't reach yet the set point, but this in the drum and this in the turbine. So there are some losses in the main steam line. Let's see the pressure in the turbine entry. 9243. Okay, this is not representative of the set point. Once this number is stable or sto stops going down, it means we reach the set point. And we see the generated load started to go down. It's eight never eight nine seven now. And the drum pressure is still decreasing. The 897.9, the drum pressure still decreasing, but very asymptotically. I would say that we are almost at the set point. And I'm wondering if turning on the third pump in the loop one and loop two recirculation loops or yeah recirculation pumps, we could bring more heat to the drum and generate more power. I didn't see this in the manual. In the manual, it just mentions to start the first pump when you start the reactor and start the second pump when you surpass twenty percent power. But clearly, we, here we have three pumps, and we saw the effect when we turn on the second pump. It just increased the steam flow because we're bringing more heat. At the same time, we will reduce void, so this will decrease reactivity, but this can be compensated by the set point. So I think I will try this now. So we see generated load, it seems stabilized. We are at almost the set point. And I would say. Clearly, this generates more energy than having the pressure at, what was it before, 12,000? So it really seems that these numbers are displayed in millibar. So this metric system, this is not imperial system. This is something that I was wondering for a long time, but I think this is the evidence because putting this at 1500 PSI, it's gives a better power output with just 95 percent of the of the nominal thermal power of the reactor i will just make as make a simple calculation to see what's the theoretical maximum 901 megawatts divided by 0 0.949 okay according to this the theoretical maximum if everything is linear it's 950 megawatts if the thermal power is at 100%. So it seems that being close to this number, it gives us more efficiency because I made this calculation two days before with the valve control at around 74%, which gives us a higher pressure set point. And at 100 thermal percent thermal power, that would give us 930 megawatts. So now we got 950. So this seems to be more efficient. Now I will turn on the third pump in the two loops. So open, open the inlet valve. On and on. And open the outlet valve.
and we see increase in reactor power sorry in reactor level generated load and jump flow we see generated load increasing will it stabilize back to the 902 it had or this will give us a net gain of output power let's see With this valve manual actuation, we could even get more than 1000 megawatt, but not for a long period of, of time. What we need to do is to build up pressure in the jump, like 12,000, and then just release the pressure opening the valve. So for a few minutes, or maybe not even minutes, seconds, we could get above 1000. I, I tried, in a, tried in a previous simulation and it's quite feasible. Okay, so we're in 933.3. I will just compute now what the ma theoretical maximum. 933.4 divided by 0 0.95. 982. So we are close to the <laughs> nomenclature of this reactor, which is 1000. And this still increasing a bit. We see the Shannon fix at zero. Mm, in the next video, I will try to to simulate a transient and see if we can operate this at all without using cheat engine. I have the feeling it's feeling it's possible because I try just using cheat engine to fix it at zero at the beginning and then close cheat engine so it keeps increasing, but from zero, not from hundred, and I could reach nominal power without problems and this was at 80% of Shannon more or less so maybe it's not a bug the Shannon concentration it's just like the real poisoning of this reactor which was which is a very sensitive poisoning design once you go below 80% of nominal power in this reactor you could not mm, override the poisoning of the Shannon you had to stop the reactor shut it down and wait for two days for the Shannon and decay products to to go away so I will try this in the next video. Okay, generated load 935.9. I will calculate again. 936 divided by 0 0.95. 985 megawatts. I would like to see that. But of course we need to wait a long period of time to see this thermal power increase to 100%. Maybe one day at least yeah it could be one day because there are many decay products that create heat that do not build up immediately it's strange that this neutron flux is a determining factor why we cannot operate this controlling the thermal power in other reactors like VVER or other pressure water reactors you just control thermal power in the reactor I don't know this keeps slowly increasing due to the increase of thermal power i guess and well i will just write down this number because the highest number i got up to date so this is 938 megawatts at 39 minutes of simulation Okay, and now before finishing the video, I will just go into the manual mode and try to open a bit more the valve, the light 80, 83, 84. You see as immediately the generated load increases, but let's see how long it holds it, how low the pressure goes and if when things stabilize again we have the same load or more or less 
if it's less then i assume that this pressure set point is the best for optimizing the the efficiency of the system if it's more then i will need to think what's going on here so you see already generated load decreasing but we are still above the value we had when we started this experiment which was 938 megawatts we are just at 300 millibars below the, the, <coughs> the pressure we had at the beginning Um, but it keeps going down Okay, the generated load, it seems to be higher than before but since we still have a pressure point that is decreasing this cannot be considered as a stationary output to, to draw conclusions from this we need to really do a proper test and this would make this video too long for the moment I will just conclude this video saying that it seems that 10.3 10.3 thousand millibars or 10.3 bars of pressure in the drum seems to be the design pressure of this reactor or this turbine and with that we got um, 938 megawatt megawatts in a stable manner if I draw some conclusion from this I will make a new video just to tell the conclusions and in the future we'll also do a video about the xenon transient and reactor poisoning. This is a continuation of the previous video. Actually, this is the same simulation and this is to show you the generated load that I reached, 1006 megawatts. We are just 33% 33, 33 of fuel remaining, so this will end very soon when the withdrawal of roads cannot increase the reaction any further. And I wanted to show you that I reached this by opening the valve control, the main valve, to 100%. And actually this makes a lot of sense because um, a steam turbine of a nuclear power plant, it's mainly like an aspirated car engine. In an aspirated car engine, the maximum effici efficiency is when you are at full throttle. Why? Because the inlet valve of the engine it's full open so there are no loses because of the closing of the valve here it's exact, exactly the same if we keep a set point that makes the valve not to be 100% open we will have a lot of loses in the fluid going through this valve to decrease the pressure and this energy that we are losing so what we need to do once we are connected and synchronized to the grid and everything is to slowly increase the opening of this valve until the maximum we can or 100% if possible why slowly because if we open suddenly we will create a drop of the pressure set point that will create a turbine scram because the pressure will go, will go too low actually we are getting a low main steam temperature actually this means pressure I think this is a problem of the simulator because we went below 7500 this is because at nominal power I mean not neutron flux but thermal power when this is at 100% mm, according to my calculation the the pressure in the drum should be 7600 so at nominal thermal power this should be perfect we should not get this alarm but now we're getting the alarm because of the decay products are not yet generating heat we are still at 95.8% we see the generated load 1006 megawatts and doing a simple calculation with this thermal power I get that we could get 1050 megawatts at 100% thermal power so I'm very happy with that because this is the design mm, output of this reactor this is called RBMK1000 because of the approximate 
generator output, which is 1050 megawatt. And yeah, that's just a short video to show you how to reach this value here. We need the loop one and loop two with the three pumps on to bring the maximum possible heat from the reactor to the drum. We need the, the main valve of the turbine open at 100% and we will end up with a pressure set point of around 7,300 or 7,600 when we reach 100% of thermal power. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Bye.